Hello everyone, TLSG here, back again with another Daily Marvel Snap video. So today we have a good card, good value spread. What we want to be able to do is compete for initiative so that we can set up an arrow on the last turn. We can set up a Shang-Chi. If it is a Shuri deck, we can set up to pull their cards and double stack them in whatever lanes we want to. If we have initiative on the turn that they're going to hide their buffed up card behind the Cosmo, we use arrow to pull it out of that lane so that it then becomes shang chi -able and a couple of other kind of unique play lines. So the overall idea of this list is to be pushing good value and just good cards onto the board every single turn. Now, this one does use a wave instead of something like a Cosmo. The wave allows us to, if we drop wave on five, we, we can either drop initiative if we don't think they're going to have an arrow and if we want to try to place our Shang-Chi. It's going to limit the opponent into only being able to play one card unless they are running a She-Hulk, Death Wave, or something similar that they can play those additional cards. It's going to force them into only being able to drop one while we can drop two. Uh, with the wave, we either want to use it defensively whenever we think they're going to burst the board, or we can use it offensively to be able to curve into one of our cards early. If we have She-Hulk and wave in our hand, then we know that we're going to have a really good turn five into turn six play. The rest of the deck is just good utility cards. Shang-Chi feels like he's a necessary evil in just about every deck, um, unless you can just somehow outpower some insane cards. We have the arrow to disposition the opponent's cards. White Queen gives us good information. Doctor Doom is going to be that surprise factor along with your She-Hulk on the last turn to push 25 power onto the board when they're really usually only calculating about 10. And then we have the Lizard, Scorpion, Nightcrawler, Sunspot for the Soak. And then one of my favorites is Mr. Fantastic. I feel like he doesn't get utilized often enough. His reach can a lot of times just win you the game by itself. Being able to reach into Plunder Castle early is going to make it really easy for you to maintain initiative throughout the entire game. So even if the six power is not necessarily the, the exciting way to win a lane, a lot of times it's a consistent way to grab a lane, death's domain, altar of death, that is, that's usually hard to play into so that you can then position your cards more strategically and efficiently compared to your opponent. If you want to see more of this deck and any other deck live, make sure to check us out on twitch.tv slash TLSGSnap. We are almost to that partner status, and so we'll be able to have a load of emotes for any of our subs. And it's always really fun being able to stream for you guys. And so with the brief deck explanation out of the way, let's go ahead and jump over into a couple of games. I hope you guys enjoy. All right, first up we have the doctor. The doc, the good doctor, bad doctor, stay doctor. We don't know if they're gonna, we don't know what they're running. They're not running Thanos, so odds are it's Shuri. We dodge the bar with no name, which is decent for us. I'm going to hide the lizard into the dark dimension. Um, the odds, are, odds of them capping it out are pretty low. They run a domino. Under Castle's last lane. So we're pretty comfy there. We could eventually do a Doctor Doom to spread power, but that would hurt us here. I think we're okay. I almost want to snap. Because Domino a lot of times is in like a Silver Surfer build and other things that are just not quite optimal most of the time. They snap into us. So strange. All right. So we have the She-Hulk. That's going to be fine. We can continue to soak. If they have a... Ooh, if it's a Silver Surfer build, which has been cropping back up in a little bit lately, it could have the Killmonger, which destroys our Sunspot. Uh, we're going to risk it. We're going to risk it. They would win Plunder Castle. I think we would win uh, this lane at after everything is kind of calculated and said and done. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, let's go ahead and skip and soak. No, we can do uh, Chavez into Plunder Castle on the last turn. Do we play our arrow here? Arrow's going to be more power. Yeah, let's do the arrow. Last turn, we're going to do Chavez because that's going to be our consistency driver. We can pull that out. We can play it over here. If they have a Killmonger, I think we win this lane. And then we have some decent power in this lane in our She-Hulk, Lizard, and uh, and Arrow. So if they change this location, then we're going to ideally yank that card out. I don't know. We'll see. This is a very strange game. You just have to go off of the good value, which, I mean, this deck does offer as good of values you can get just about every single turn or pretty consistently. So they pull our Polaris over, or they pull our Sunspot over. It ties in the bar with no name. If they do have Silver Surfer, they all of a sudden lose this lane because we didn't float any energy this turn. 
The Chavez will win us in the right lane. We didn't play into the Dark Dimension this turn, so the Juggernaut doesn't have anything to hit. It is the Silver Surfer tech. So even though they pull our Sunspot out, we do win the Bar with No Name because it's a little bit less power. We win Plunder Castle. What a strange, strange game we have here. All right, next up we have Dandelion. And we played against, I think, Dandelion in one of our other recent videos. Um, and so they start with Sunspot. They're not running Thanos, so kudos to you. Um, that means it's probably, <laughs> that means unfortunately it's probably Shuri, but we'll take it. We're going to play our Scorpion just to continue the good value. We could have played our, our Nightcrawler and then pushed over into this lane to grab an early initiative. Ooh, that's not great. The Warrior Falls, uh, actively <laughs> hurts us here, um, because it's going to trigger before our Sunspot soaks. Because we didn't soak in or float any last turn, it's actually going to get destroyed here, even if we skipped this turn. <sighs> Which feels really bad. Uh, we're going to go ahead and play Mr. Fantastic into the negative zone. It's not great, but uh, we're going to push it out onto the board. We don't... Oh, man. Oh, wow. Dandelion, my friend. You, uh, you offered us some mercy. I appreciate that. Let's go ahead and play the Nightcrawler in Warrior Falls. We're going to soak some energy. Next turn, if we draw Arrow, uh, or if we draw Wave, then we can Wave into the, the She-Hulk and Doctor Doom. They do have Shuri. So depending on what they play and where, we might want to use uh, Arrow this turn. Ooh, we do have the Wave. So we have Wave. What I'm thinking is we can, we can use Wave this turn. That would allow us to next turn use our arrow to our arrow to pull them so that their big cards stack so that their taskmaster and whatever big card i assume the red skull stack together and then we have the she hulk that will be able to sneak in is my is my general thought process right now we'll see if it pays off we're gonna they snapped we're gonna use our wave here um, there's no Cosmo to stop us from pulling cards. They can only play one card now, which I think is going to be the important factor. If they could have played another low cost card, then our arrow becomes much less impactful. Now, if they arrow of their own, if they have an arrow in response to ours, uh, then they, then they've gotten us. They, they win. But if they don't have an arrow then we're fine. The negative zone does hurt us. Had we been able to have this just a little bit higher, then the arrow I don't think would even be an issue. Um, we could do She-Hulk and Doctor Doom, but that doesn't win us over here. So we need to pull whatever they play into Warrior's Fall if possible. Let's go ahead and lock it in. See if they get a little bit too greedy. The air, oh no, it's the Taskmaster in, Crim in the Crimson Cosmos lane. So we were absolutely fine. We yank that Taskmaster over to the right, courtesy of Wave, making sure they couldn't pad it with another one cost card. And then we win left, we win mid. They can have the Warrior Fall lane with their massive 69 power. We're going to let them have it. We will take the four cubes. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have Little Stitches. Three, ga three games in a row that uh, we're not going against Thanos. We'll, we'll, count, we'll count our blessings. We pull, oh no, our arrow comes down um, and their Cosmo comes down as well. So just seeing the Cosmo and the fact that they're not a Thanos list, I'm immediately thinking Shuri. So I would expect a Lizard, um, a Zero, the lizard comes down. Um, next turn, maybe the armor. Maybe an armor, maybe a zero and a titania. Something very similar, I, <laughs> I imagine, is going to be their play, unfortunately. Um, I think we're going to be able to read the Sheree deck like a book. So them being able to do, if they have it, of course. Ooh. If they have it, of course. Them being able to play their, their Shuri and then their follow-up card here doesn't feel great now we could do we could do a wave flip here they only get to play one card per turn or one card next turn uh we would we would also only get to play one card how do we want to play this it's either that or we do our she hulk now but i want to hold our she hulk we're going to rotate our wave we're going to rotate our wave we're going to do wave we have a couple of decent cards to pull into um, and what, I mean, we're hoping that we pull back into it or can flip back into it next turn is our, is our like biggest 
a hope or, or dream. They play their one card over into Danger Room, so maybe they don't have the Shuri in hand. We do know that they... Okay, we got their Titania because of Wave. I was so confused for a second um, that that was their highest cost card. Uh, let's go ahead and rotate our Doctor Doom. They did play their Shuri here. We can't pull it over. We can't get it out of the Cosmo lane, so that's going to be our loss lane. We're going to rotate our Doctor Doom. We have Nightcrawler that can move after this turn. We're hoping to we're hoping to flip into Wave, honestly. We probably should have held it, um, but we'll see. We will absolutely see. The Mr. Fantastic is decent. That gives us the lead in the right lane. The Captain Marvel is an interesting one. Um, I haven't been the biggest fan of the Captain Marvel tech here. It seems like it come, becomes a little bit clunky in some in some scenarios or some senses. Let's go ahead and rotate one card. We have uh, we have one good, two good, two two good flips. We could get Doctor Doom. That's going to be great at, at filling here and here. I guess it, well they can't Taskmaster here. They could here, but Taskmaster the twelfth power if that's all that they do. And then that and Titania, maybe they flip. I don't know. I think we have a good shot. Titania to the left could, they could be trying that after the Captain Marvel moves. But I haven't been too incredibly impressed with Captain Marvel in general. It's just for the five cost, only getting 12 compared to 20 from Typhoid Mary, 30 from Red Skull. Just seems like it's a, a downgrade. It gives you a little flexibility, but it's not always enough to find your wins. And had Sakaar not pulled into our arrow, we of course could have arrowed last turn into the Shang-Chi to take out the Captain Marvel before she, before she was an issue. We also have Initiative here, which good card decks are going to be very good at doing. They do end up retreating. We had a really good flip set up, unless they had some way to just push a, a phenomenal amount of power and they were able to get lucky. We're going to be able to swing the remaining two lanes. So we do get the second win against Shuri. Let's go ahead and take the win, jump over into the next one. I'm sure our luck is going to run out soon and we'll see Thanos, but until then, we're going to keep scooping up cubes everywhere we can. All right, next up we have Tyler. The first location is Grand Central. They don't have a Thanos list. I think we hit a good pocket. Either that or people are getting tired of playing Thanos, and so they're starting to experiment. We'll see how long that lasts. And so they do, they play Sunspot into mid. We played our Sunspot into Grand Central. Uh, it will pull a card after turn five, but I figured it was worth the risk. Um, rather than playing into maybe accidentally Space, Sto Space Throne or Bar With No Name, and just being being at a deficit from there. Without any way to change locations, we want to be a little bit more cautious about where we play and how we play. So they skipped. They absorbed some additional energy with their Sunspot. We played Scorpion. We do have some good cards. Subterranean hurts everybody. If they're running Shuri and they don't have Shuri in their hand already, then that gives us a really good advantage or potential good advantage. Uh, we have our Mr. Fantastic, which is great. We're going to be able to maybe steal or swing initiative in our favor. The Deathlock is super interesting. Uh, I'm curious what they're running with the Deathlock. So let's play the Lizard. We're going to go ahead and play the Rock as... Yeah, we're going to go ahead and play the Rock as well. We're going to play the Rock. I was back and forth. We don't know what Grand Central is going to pull into, but I would rather... I don't know. We could have skipped and then played She-Hulk next turn. Ooh, so they play Shuri on Curve, which is great for them. Um, so happy for you. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and play Wave. Uh, we're going to play it into mid. If Grand Central pulls into our Shang-Chi, we'll be able to play She-Hulk and whatever else we draw into. Arrow, ideally. Because um, there's no Cosmo to block us from maneuvering it where we want to. They skip super interesting because Grand Central is going to pull into something. Maybe their She-Hulk, maybe their Taskmaster. It does pull into our Shang-Chi. We hit their death with an amazing RNG flip. We now have the She-Hulk and one additional card to play on this last turn. So our Chavez and they're going to have to swing two lanes. They can most likely only play one card. Other, I, They could play two. They could play the She-Hulk and something else. Ah, they could still She-Hulk and Taskmaster. Yeah, for a 20 and 20. Oh, that's tough. They still have a chance to win, even though we got really lucky with our Shang-Chi. It just comes down to if they drew duds or not. Um, the She-Hulk Taskmaster combo still works into the wave. If they don't have She-Hulk, then they can only play one card, and we should win as a result. All right, so they play one card in the right lane. They're probably going to soak some in mid. Oh, the arrow uh, pulls our cards over, but since we can play two, we don't have to worry about that. We're winning in the left lane. We're now winning in the right lane. The arrow is not quite enough to get the job done. 
we will take our wins. That is actually that is actually four in a row, which, which I haven't been able to get since this season started. So we are raking in some cubes. Let's go ahead and jump over, see if we can finish out the video with a perfect 5-0. and oh. Maybe against Thanos. Oh, right. Next up, we have Highlander. Uh, maybe. Uh, it's kind of a very generic name. Generic avatar. Could be a generic bot. But we'll see. Um, we do have Wave and She-Hulk. So we can limit what they can do on the last couple of turns. Or on, I guess on the last turn. We did just get really heavily bodied by a Sauron, Shuri, Typhoid Mary, Red Skull, Galactus deck. Nimrod, Nimrod Galactus deck. Which was just brutal. Uh, absolutely devastating. Devastating. So it can't be a... It's not going to be able to... Okay, I was going to say it's not going to be able to be a Galactus. But with the Green Goblin coming down... Uh, it absolutely can be. So they have the Wolverine. Uh, the Green Goblin is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Uh, let's double our Sunspot. Uh, I don't know. We're going to try to gain the, the lead or the tempo going into our last couple of turns, just in case they do something like a Psylocke or a Wave to one of the sides. Okay, so the Cosmo comes down. The Nova comes down. Could still be Galactus, or they could be pretending to be Galactus. We can't arrow to the right, uh, which that's okay. I think we play She-Hulk. That's going to allow us to do our Nightcrawler move over on the last turn into an arrow in the left lane. So that whatever they're trying to, to, to pull on us, it shouldn't work. If they have a Hobgoblin here, it's going to get stuck on their side because we're going to cap out our side of the board. Which is even, wor which is even worse for them. Let's, um, let's move our Nightcrawler. We're going to arrow over to the left so that no matter what they try and play, uh, Destroyer, I guess Destroyer could go off, yeah? Yeah, Destroyer can still go off, but that's still a very low amount of power on the board that they have. So it's the it stacks in the left lane, so 19 power over there. We can't win that one, but we just win the other two. All right, next up we have Unthinkable, and they are running the Unthinkable. The first location is Kamar Taj, which is amazing for Thanos. Um, it's better for Shuri decks, but it's amazing for Thanos because now they have a full hand of stones. Um, they're able to get four stones out of their deck, which they didn't cap out their hand, which tells me they had a handful of stones anyways. But regardless, uh, incredible value to be able to ramp up with two extra energy with the time stone. They could do a turn three leech. Let's not will that into existence, but it is possible. And then they could do double space stone. And I don't know if that's able to move two cards at that point. But not to downplay the just draws in general that you get off of those cards. We do get the very quick snap. I I don't blame them. If they even even without Quinjet, being able to draw just basically your whole deck here is so big. Uh, so the Soul Stone comes down. The Reality Stone changes mid into the Sanctum Sanctorum, uh, which we can't necessarily push any additional power into but we're okay with we're okay with what we have right now uh let's do the let's do the mr fantastic we could potentially lean into a dr doom on the last turn into kamartage which could double fill the sanctum sanctorum that should come as a surprise a lot of times you're not expecting the dr doom outside of a ramp deck and so maybe we can steal that away they do do they do play the power stone and the space stone and they're going to be able to move one of these cards. And then it pulls into their Lockjaw, which is not great. Because they can move their Lockjaw here. They can rotate one card here. But then... Or they can rotate two cards here, I suppose. We, we do also draw into our Doctor Doom. So, they did the Time Stone last turn. We have to hope for a Not Leech. Is about all that we can do. Uh, I'm going to play Wave. So that we can do the Doctor Doom as early as possible. I want to try to mitigate the chances that they can, that they can Leech us. It's still going to be there. Um, they could rotate the... Ooh, the leech to... If it's the leech, it, to the left is not the right play. Um, let's see what they end up playing over here. They do move their Power Stone, which is uh, which is big value. The Magneto pulls over our Mr. Fantastic. Luckily, it doesn't cap out that lane. It does hurt us slightly. We're not going to be able to win Kamar Taj. We do get She-Hulk as well. So they didn't play... <sighs> now it's tough. She-Hulk here is a 9 power play. Because, uh, because of the Soul Stone. This is 10, 11. We come up over this lane. And then all we have to do is push additional power into the... Ooh. 
The downside here is if they flip into uh, if they flip into Leech or if they play Leech, if they flip into or play Mr. Well, they'd have to flip into Mr. Fantastic. And so that would bump this up by 4 to 19. I don't know that this would do it at that point. Let's do the Doctor Doom. We're going to do Doctor Doom. That will likely give us initiative, but we can just She-Hulk or Shang-Chi, depending on what they play this turn. So I'm I'm wanting to... Ooh. That sucks. The arrow is not... The arrow... Oh, okay. The arrow into the leech. So playing to the left was the right call. Um... But now how do we win from here? If we skip, if we skip and absorb six energy, we can win the left lane. But they would oh, but they would win. They would win right. And so it's gonna come down to a flip of if they can do it. They have two cards left in their deck. So eh, they can't play it outright because of Sanctum Sanctorum. It's a tough call, but I think we're just gonna soak here. Let's soak it up, guys. Let's see what they play. I think we lose the car. We're hoping... Okay, so the Shang-Chi, that's fine. No blue Marvel, and we're fine. The arrow is fine. We win mid. We soak enough in the left lane. We win that one by one. It's a tough one. The, the locations both favored and unfavored them. We will absolutely take it. Um, that one feels like it is a good capstone to end the video on. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a like and a comment down below. As always, this has been TLSG. Later.